you know how it is. You're just messing with me. When you read a chart, a part of you takes over that's smarter than you and does a good job, right? Is we that what happens to me? But it might not work that way for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about this more at another time. Sure. But just briefly, mm -hmm. spiritually speaking, okay. how does astrology help a person? Well, it helps a person because <laughs> there's multiple, there's, you know, becoming enlightened, let's take it all the way to the top, is a huge process. And it, doesn't, it, takes, uh, it doesn't take just four years or four lifetimes. It takes a long, long, long time because there's so much things a person has to become aware of in themselves. Mm -hmm. I like Yogananda called self-realization because it is a process of self-realization. Um, and that self-realization has innumerable facets to it from the very basics of just realizing I have the potential to think for myself. That's just, that, that's self-realization. It's like, well, I'm actually being that I can think for myself. Not that everyone does that. A lot of people, most people are around programmed to a greater or lesser degree. Some people are programmed 100% practically, you know, mm -hmm. and their only place they think for themselves is what's TV show they like better. I mean, there's some people that are that um, programmed, you know, um, and just the idea that, oh, I can think for myself, that's really when we, we really could say that's like the, the first self-realization idea we can truly have. Mm -hmm. So I have this ability. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a powerful ability, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that gives, that opens every door to every other possibility you can do. And everything we're doing is discovering what this self that we are is capable of. And then one day we get to the point where we realize, oh, I'm actually capable of sitting on God's lap. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, that's probably a pretty cool realization too, right? Mm -hmm. And then everything in between those two steps is all different aspects of self-realization. And there's lots of ways to get it. Um, the things, you know, the, there's, okay, realizing God is one thing that's innumerable. Because when you start realizing God, you're going to realize God in innumerable ways. It's one thing that's innumerable, okay? Getting to that point, there's so many self-realizations that have to have happen along before that can truly happen. And those self-realizations are all about a person becoming more okay with themselves. Mm -hmm. See, God can't give us anything that we won't give ourselves. Okay, God gave us free will. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. He can't just say, okay, I'm just going to dive into you and make you happy. Because he gave us free will, which basically means he's only going to give us what we give ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if we've got a lot of complexes going on and we're giving ourselves shit to eat every day in every aspect of our life because we have such wrong ideas about who we are and what we're worth of and, our, and um, you know, basically that, how's God just going to show up in that if we won't give it to ourselves? So when we start giving ourselves the truth of who we really are, at that point, God can start saying, okay, I can start stepping in now because ultimately the truth of who you really are is me. Mm -hmm. One of the great tools we have for discovering the truth of who we really are are these occult sciences, whether astrology or other things. Like we, we have self-realizations. Aha, aha, aha. When we learn astrology, we get self-realizations. Um, and those are all building us up to the point of God realization. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those things are helping us have a better relationship with ourselves so that we are treating ourselves better the way God would like to treat us, but can't. Mm -hmm. why, why don't you have money? Why don't you have love? Why don't you have a job you love? Why does your life suck? Because that's how you treat yourself. And you pray to God, oh, God, please give me a, some, give me love, give me money, give me anything but hell. God's like, well, you kind of, this is how you're treating yourself, and that's why I'm giving it to you. Mm -hmm. When you start treating yourself better, like, what does that mean? Well, let's say Ryan shows up, and he walks through the door, and he bumps his bump his head. And I say, you're a stupid idiot. Can't you walk through the door? What's wrong with you? I'm not treating you good, right? Mm -hmm. And if I, you know, if someone shows up who's like, um, you know, who's got rabies, and I say, oh, go, 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 go hang out with that person. I'm not treating you good, right? Right. But see, the thing is, we do that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Some toxic person shows up, and we fall in love with them, you know? I mean, we're, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So just the same way, treating ourselves good is just like treating anyone else good. And people on many, many levels are not treating themselves with respect. 
They're, we're always our own worst abuser. Mm -hmm. And so how's God going to step in? Well, he's going to step in the way we're treating ourselves, which is an abusive relationship that we try, whatever. So it's always a reflection of how we're treating ourselves. And so through astrology, we, got, we can grasp in a way that we can wrap our minds around how we're treating ourselves, what our relationship with our self is, to realize that ultimately we have to improve our relationship with ourselves. And that simply means to be psychologically healthy. Mm -hmm. And the amount of things people will do that are a form of self-abuse are, are just utterly shocking. People will want to succeed and make sure they fail, <laughs> you know, which means they really just want to fail because that's what they do. And through astrology, conscious. we can see that. Exactly. If it was conscious, it wouldn't be a problem. Right. Self-realization is the process of making conscious what is unconscious. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have the power of God within us, that's unconscious. And there's a process to achieve that. But in the between, you know, in the way of all that, is all the other things we're not conscious of. All these unconscious things that we're doing to ourselves. The reason this part of our life never works. There's an unconscious reason for it. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that. We can't just drop all that we have to process it realize it and we get experiences in our life that are trying to tell us this every experience we have is a symbol of what's going on inside of us so you lose your job what does that mean what's that symbolizing you get cancer what's that symbolizing you you know you you have a bad relationship what's that symbolizing your your boyfriend your wife your husband cheats on you what's that symbolizing about you mm -hmm. it's always a symbol everything that's happening in our lives is a symbol so we're going through life, these, these symbols of our lives are happening, yes. But also we can just whip out a chart and say, okay, let's just look at your symbols. We don't have to wait for that symbol to show up and ruin your life. Let's just look at it now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But... As, a, as a planet, as an avashta, rather than as the next femme fatale. But if, if that was the case, then any astrologer who knew about the avashtas would be able to just say, oh, well, here it is. And then the person would say, great, now I'm going to make a change. It doesn't always happen. There's a whole difficult, there's a change is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can signal it out, but now we have to figure out, and really going back to the Vashtas was the single most important astrology technique mm -hmm. that I've discovered, and um, which has not been used in how, how long until I brought it back in a useful way. And every few years I teach a whole new Lajitaria Vashtas course. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because I learn a deeper way or a different way or another way to work towards that goal of, okay, we have an avashta, it's a problem, it's a bad avashta, I mean, it's, a, it's created a difficulty in ourselves and therefore our lives. And now we have to find a way to resolve this. How are we going to resolve it? Okay. Um, and every two or three years, I discover new ways to work with the avashta so that we can resolve something from a, another point of view with another dynamic. Some point of views will work better for different people. And um, so I've taught two huge classes on Avashtas based on um, really completely different ways to try to work with those Avashtas. Mm -hmm. And um, the last course I did, the Lajitati Avashtas Master's course, was um, really just about one of the things troublesome Avashtas do is they don't allow us to listen to our intuitive selves. Mm -hmm. And so instead of doing the things that are right for us, we listen to our brains and our brains are great tools for, you know, our brains have a purpose to figure out how to do something. But the purpose of our brains is not to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. The brain does not have the capacity to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Only the soul knows what's right for us. The brain, no matter how much data it collects, cannot make a proper decision about what to do. Anytime we have a bad avashta, we have a subconscious wound or scar that relates to that avashta. And that prevents us, then that makes us go to our mind. So all of a sudden the mind is in charge instead of the self being in charge. So that course is all about how the avashtas are showing where we're not listening to that intuitive self. Mm -hmm. And we have seven planets, sun, moon, you know, sun, moon on the Saturn. Each of those represent a step in the process of what we're trying to achieve with everything we do. Mm -hmm. So the planet that's the worst avashta, we could be doing great. Sun did good, moon did good, and then we get to Mercury, and oh, my Mercury's in about a bust, and all of a sudden the whole train derails. You know, I'm two sevenths of the way up the road, and, and the whole train derails. And then, and that's what happens. Maybe it's your Jupiter that's trouble. So you're six seventh of the way to the home journey, and then 
you get to the finish line and you trip and break your ankle every time. So where we're at in the process of trying to find fulfillment and growth, which is Jupiter, it's a, it's a process through all the planets. And the final process is Saturn, which is the letting go, which is an, as important as the first step of beginning. So um, any along, along any of those directions, we can um, all of a sudden stop listening to our inner voice, to our intuition, and make a choice that derails the whole train. And, um, and so that's what that course is all about. It's a really powerful way to work with the Abhashtas. Um, right now I'm in the process of uh, another course, which is about the fact that every Avashta is a goal that we've decided to achieve. So if we have a starved planet, we have a goal of, I want to go out there and feel starved on this. I want to go out there and be hungry, starved, curled up in a ball with my stomach hurting. That's our actual goal. Mm. <laughs> then the question is, why is that my goal? And the answer is, because as terrible as this goal is, there's a worse possibility I'm trying to escape. Mm. So for everything people do that hurts them or doesn't give them what they say they want, there's a worse possibility that they're trying to avoid. And in trying to avoid that, they're doing this, living this shitty life, mm -hmm. you know? Because they're getting something that, by doing that thing that's making them miserable, they're getting something. See, humans are goal-centered creatures. We are 100% about our goals. Even the biggest loser who doesn't leave the house, he has succeeded in his goals, which is to be the biggest loser and never leave the house. So whatever someone's doing, they're doing it because that's their goal. That's not necessarily the goal they want. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But it's the goal that they want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not the goal that's the best use of them. It's not the goal that's going to give them the fulfillment. It's the goal that based on everything going on inside of them that they've decided they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And so they've set out to achieve it. They want to be sick. They want to be in the hospital. They want to go from doctor to doctor. That's giving them something. And one of the things that's always giving a person is it's freeing them from the fear of doing something that they really want to do that's going to scare the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather be sick with a broken leg and cancer than this other thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, what is it that they are trying to achieve? So what do you look at for that? It's just another way to read the Abhashtas. So we go, okay, what, we, and we have to logically deduce, okay, why would someone have the goal of never going out of the house? Okay, well, maybe that, then they don't have to confront their fears of rejection for one person. There could be lots of reasons, right? If you never leave the house, you never have to worry about someone hating you. Example I read in the book was a, a girl who had a crush on a guy, okay? And she wanted, oh no, a guy had a crush on the girl, I believe. No, a girl had a crush on a guy. And uh, she wanted to go just be around this guy and let him see who she was, but she had a crush on him. And so the minute she even thought about it, she would blush. And so she would tell herself and went to a therapist. As soon, I, I need you to fix my blushing mm -hmm. so I can go talk to the guy I want. He goes, I'm not going to do that for you because if I fix your blushing and you go talk to the guy and he rejects you, you'll be devastated. He goes, see, you're blushing and crying about not being able to talk to the boy you like because you blush because you're scared that if you could talk to the guy, he would reject you. So you're creating your blushing problem because you're scared of a possible rejection. Or a rejection. So, when you, re when you get brave enough to be rejected, you won't blush anymore. And you'll be able to talk to him, and if he likes you, great. If not, it won't matter. And then you can go on to the next one, and your life can move forward. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple thing of how our psychology is working. If we have a fear of something, you know, see, the thing is, the hard thing about being human, the, the, the thing, the crux of it all, tell me. I'm going to tell you that this is it. Are you listening? Okay. The crux of being human is that 